Michael Brown was shot and killed minutes after walking out of this Ferguson convenience store in August of 2014. Surveillance video showing Brown shoving the store's owner before allegedly stealing a handful of cigarillos has been seen around the world. The owners released statements to their attorneys, but for the first time in this exclusive interview, they tell me exactly what happened when Brown walked inside of their store and why they did not report to police exactly what we saw on camera. Michael Brown's killing ignited a nationwide movement and outrage, particularly here in Ferguson, Missouri. 18-year-old Brown and his 22-year-old friend Dorian Johnson entered the Ferguson Market and Liquor Store on West Florissant Avenue just before noon. In the video, we see what appears to be Brown taking a handful of cigarillos and handing some of them to Johnson. Soon after that, the store owner, Andy Patel, attempts to block the two from leaving the store before Brown shoved him into a rack of snacks, then further used his size to intimidate the storekeeper. Police described it as a strong armed robbery. Is that, what, what did he do exactly? Well, we know a gentleman came in here and stole the cigarillos, right. but we didn't know the gentleman mm -hmm. by the person who he was. Was it both of them or just the one? The other guy, he, the nice guy, he put back. Oh, he put it back. Was... Mike, Mike, if I steal here, then put your hand, you oh. put back. How big is he? He's about probably, I could say about 6'3", 6'4", 200 plus pounds. Yeah. Uh, and a gentleman like him, you know, anybody, even you or I, anybody, could not push a six feet guy. He just basically tried to stop Michael Brown. And he just grabbed him right off the collar and then pushed him. Lucky enough, lucky enough we had some chips racks and stuff in the back where he bounced off of. Otherwise he would have fell straight to the ground. Oh, was it a hard push? It was a hard push. But why did you, why did you try to stop him? That's just part of the nature. He's a business owner. Yeah. As a business owner, first thing thing you get right. is you want to stop somebody that's doing something wrong. I know stop everybody still. If you don't stop yeah. one, then it's just gonna be out. Yeah. You know, he's letting it go. Yeah. So why won't you go try it again? Again. That's why. But weren't you afraid to do that? Uh from the dialogue. No. I have I have gun by scared of anything. We I have gun. I know shoot. Because it is it is a thing, a product going out, somebody stealing it. Yeah. And you would do the same if somebody came in your house yeah. and then say take something yours. So all we did was try to stop the person. We didn't have nothing against him. When he took off, he took off. We had nothing against him. And once he took off, that was it. About 10 minutes after leaving the store, Brown and Johnson encountered Officer Darren Wilson, who would shoot the unarmed Brown dead in the street outside the Canfield Green Apartments following a confrontation. We didn't call the cops. We didn't do nothing. There was another side call probably they had or whatever, and they might have had a confrontation then. But we never got interfered with Someone had stole uh, Somebody from the store had called the police. Uh, we, as, we as the owner, yeah, we as the owners, we never called the officers. Uh, once the guy, it was two dollars, three dollars, whatever it was, we understand. You know, we understand the loss, whatever it happens sometimes in business. So we personally didn't want the gentleman to lose his life over something. Well, of course not. Like everyone else, the store owner and his family was shocked and saddened by the horrific chain of events that followed the incident at their store. In fact, when police arrived to ask for video surveillance footage of the incident, they initially refused to turn it over. They came in, they said, we need the video, and then we said we're not releasing it, and then they forced us to release it. Uh, I have we three store burn. We yeah. have three. Yeah. yeah. The Sam Meat Market next door and the Red's Barbecue. Those are all yours. Those are ours. That's why. I so we took a much quite much extensive much loss. Too much loss. You know. Wow. How many stores do you own total? Uh, How many do you have total? Make it up. Those three. And yeah. so, two of your three businesses have been burned to the ground. I saw you do this. <laughs> I know. Very sad. It's it's something we worked hard for for years to build, and then within a blink of the eye, we lose everything. Just just to my mind work, that's why you know I can't fit too much. You know, my my work, I have too much damage. You know. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. This market here barely escaped. The owners credit Good Samaritans who protected the store when they say authorities would not respond. I 15 times for police, you know, coming inside. Didn't respond? Yeah. 
No respawn. We and they did bur they burn your place yeah, a little they, bit. They tried to burn the place from the inside, uh, which we had one good Samaritan that came in here and they put the fire out for us. And meanwhile, we were driving here because we live kind of far. But by the time we get here, the fire was put out. So I would gladly, you know, appreciate if the supporter came out here and that you know the good Samaritan came out and told us who they were. But that is the only reason the store is pretty much standing on this solid building. Wow. The video of that put a worldwide showing a gentleman trying to burn the place down. But when we came by, we realized the fire was put out. What damage did you place? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Yeah. Or plus. They they took all the cigarettes we had, all the liquor, plus the property damage you see. And so, what do you go from here? You gonna stay open? We gonna stay open to business. We gonna still serve for, uh, Ferguson. It's been several months since that exclusive interview. Since then, the owners have removed the plywood out front and are continuing to do exactly what they said, serve the people of Ferguson. I'm Tim Lampley.